think about it like this. Sleep architecture is pretty consistent. You sleep in 90 to 120 minute cycles. When you go to sleep early at night, you have what's called slow wave sleep pressure, which means that your body is going, you're going to have more non-REM sleep than REM sleep. As night goes on, now you have more REM than non-REM. If you sleep deprive somebody, like they can't sleep for 24 hours, 48 hours, and you give them a three hour sleeping window, their body will immediately move into a uh, deep sleep. Like that's the, it's going to almost prioritize solely on that, but the architecture is the same. These cycles, there's a reason for that growth hormone production. The body's like, okay, I need certain things like growth hormone to help stimulate tissue recovery. It's like trying to preserve certain things. Still sleep is kind of one of these enigmas that we haven't fully elucidated. Like if you, if you read any sleep studies, like that's typically like the first sentence or two sleep is this amazing biological process that is yet to be fully elucidated, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And then it goes into it. And I, after reading that like several hundred times, I was like, wow. And then the more we learn, but, um, if you, for the average person focus on the, the big things, duration, onset, consistency. That's the, like, if you want to look at the three big behaviors, they're going to drive things duration, seven to nine hours. It's pretty well documented. Like, you know, if you think you're the person that can do really well off of five hours of sleep a night, you're not like, you don't most likely don't have that genetic polymorphism. There was a paper that just came out. I wrote an article about it and some people got really upset, but it showed that, um, people that, um, exercise and frequently and intensely, and then get, it was like six to eight hours of sleep a night. They have slower, uh, rates of cognitive decline. Makes sense, right? Sleeping, exercising people that exercise frequently and intensely and get less than six hours of sleep a night have similar curves of cognitive decline as people who don't get very much sleep and don't exercise. Wow. Pretty, pretty crazy. Double whammy. Um, so the, the duration matters. Seven to nine is like a safe window. The consistency of when you go to bed and when you wake up prevents social jet lag, right? Every time, you know, you want to have maybe have a window over you flex an hour, you know, forward or back, but as tightly of a window as you can keep during the week and on the weekends, you're going to keep your circadian rhythm at a very consistent cycle. When you start messing with that, then you end up with social jet lag. It increases your risk of cardiometabolic disease, uh, depression, um, anxiety issues. Um, you're not going to be as focused. And then when you go to sleep matters, there was a really interesting study that came out. I think it was like a year and a half ago, the broad Institute at MIT and Harvard and the university of Colorado did a study with over 800,000 people in the UK biobank. Plus, they used 23andMe genetic data. They used sleep trackers, journals. I mean, it was a very robust study. And they wanted to understand the relationship between, um, um, you know, what's it called? Man, I'm blanking right now. Night owl versus. Yeah. The chronotypes. The chronotypes. Chronotype. I mean, Thank you. you. You've got the. Uh, you know, I had him on the podcast and actually I did the test and I was a bear. So you got bear, fox, <laughs> dolphin, yes, lion. Yes, that's it. The chronotypes. Here was the interesting thing. First of all, they only found that 9% of people are genetically an evening type. Wow. Yeah. 9%. Uh, most of us feel like we're evening types because of stimulation from our cell phones and different electronics. Uh, the next part was this shifting your the midpoint of sleep so if you really just think about it from a broad perspective shifting when you go to bed back by one hour so let's say you're going to bed at 1 a.m you shift it back to midnight they found those a 23 percent reduction in major depression shifting it back two hours was almost a 40 percent reduction wow and then they're like okay why is this people that go to bed earlier and wake up earlier get more exposure to what Luck. 
the correct light. Wow. That's it. Boom. So, you know, one of the first things we learned and when I was studying sleep is, you know, the, the things that drive sleep, there's a homeostatic drive and a circadian drive. Mm -hmm. Light is the primary, what's called Zeitgeber or yeah. anchor of the circadian clock. So when we go back to these deep and REM sleep and all this kind of stuff, it's just like, look, duration, onset, consistency, and then make your room cold, dark, and quiet, you know, do the basic stuff yeah. and let that take care of itself. Mm. Like we're not to a point yet where I can like put some probe intracranially and stimulate something mm. to have like, just, I think it, Kathy made a really good point. I think it was off the air where we were talking and she's like, Eric, I was at a major sleep conference with a bunch of doctors. And she's like, we, some of these folks out there have made sleep something that's not equitable anymore. Mm. With you. Because we're put, we're putting so many things around it that like you got to do this you got to do this you got to do this you got to just no just real simple when the sun goes down make your house mm. dark go to bed you know what i'm yeah. saying like let's just get back to what was happening a hundred years ago mm. and if you want to use like for yourself like red light these different things that's like a a one percent you yeah. know mm -hmm. but if the average person just cleaned up these other things their their entire life could change mm. 